Hi there, this is Brandon with StepRock Media. We're going to be doing a rewiring or technically a rerouting of the wires on the Monoprice Mini MP Mini 3D printer. Rerouting the wires is considered kind of a preventative maintenance early on by most everybody in the MP Mini community because the wires tend to get damaged or broken or snagged up in the mechanism. So we're going to do the no drill method. You're not going to be drilling a hole in the back of the printer. It's a little bit easier to do it this way. What you'll need to do is pre-print the side panel and the cable guide. If you can't print at all right now, you're going to have to do some repair before you can do that. Uh, you can proceed without those parts, but you're going to want to get them in order to finish. Tools you're going to want to have include a Phillips head screwdriver, probably going to want an Allen wrench, you'll need something to snip a couple of zippy ties, and a paper clip. <laughs> a piece of equipment you'll want is a cable tie of some kind. I actually found one among some scrap that I had around the garage. Uh, I also use a couple of screws that are from some old computer parts here. Uh, another thing that's really helpful to have is some electrical tape, or better yet, heat shrink tape, which people use. Before we really get going, I guess it goes without saying, but doing this is on you. It's at your risk. If you're on warranty, this is a good way to avoid your warranty, so be aware of that. Uh, again, completely at your discretion to do this or not. Uh, all right, so I've pre-printed my side panels. They're actually from two different files, and the version that I use is just with passive cooling. It doesn't have a fan in it. The other thing I have is a cable guide for the back of it that I think really finishes it out nicely. When I was finished with it, I actually zippy-tied the cables to it, so it's good uh, to, to do that so that they don't shift around. I would like to make a note about that piece. When you do print it, you're going to want to flip it in Cura so that the whole of it goes over to the right more than it is to the left. That really does help quite a bit with the process. I use the screws from the computer parts to attach it to the back of the Mini instead of the screws that I took out of the Mini. The ones that you take out will probably work, but uh, I felt they didn't have quite as much bite anymore into the actual metal of the, of the unit, so I decided to replace them with something a little bit longer. Now, getting into the process of doing the repair is actually not all that difficult, and it begins with taking off the side panel. Unplug the whole thing. Do I need to say that? Unplug the whole thing. Uh, once you're in there, take a look at the wires and get a photograph of it. You're going to want that picture. We're going to pull a couple of wires out, and they're really easy to identify. They're the ones that are along the back of the unit. We're going to skip the first one, get the second one, skip the next one, get the last one. There's a bank of four wires. The wires that you're going to pull are the thicker one at the far away corner, the one that's furthest away from you, and skip the next one coming towards you, and then get the next one. The one that's the double white one, you want to skip that one. The other thick one, you want to skip that one. But please get a picture of it so you can be sure which way the wires go back in. Uh, if you have a hard time getting those cables out, it's perfectly okay to unscrew the entire base of the unit and uh, just pull it away to give yourself a little bit more extra working room. But if you can get your fingers in there without doing it, it's perfectly fine to leave it. And all you have to do is take off the side panel. Snip the zippy cable that's in there holding them in place you should be able to get those wires unplugged pretty easily. There's also another zippy cable on the other side of the metal. Once you've done that, you should be able to pass the wires up and out. You may need to take the little plastic heads off at this time. Uh, you almost certainly will need to take the little white plastic heads off at some point, and I'll explain how to do that now. Uh, they've got a little metal clip on them, like a little a little spring-loaded clip on the top. If you look at it, there's a little slot on the top, and it's kind of a nuisance to try to push down on it with like a paper clip. So what I wound up doing is actually sliding the paper clip up in towards the wire and wedged it in there. That way I was able to draw the cap off the end of the paper clip and off the end of the wire. In order to move the wires and not damage them, I ended up taking the entire heated bed off and carefully flipping the wires over to the right side. You may or may not have to do that. But I didn't think they had enough slack after I started moving the bed around, uh, so I really wanted to give them more slack. If you've got extra Kepton tape, it's a great time to put that on there. That's that heat-resistant tape uh, to help secure them. In order to feed the wires through the cable tie, I had to put a little bit of electrical tape on the tips of them and just hold them together and shove them through. It was a little bit of a nuisance to get them to pass all the way through, but eventually they did go through. 
When you pass the wires up through the body of the printer, you'll see that there's a little grommet that is still in there. It might have come loose while you did it. Go ahead and grab that. You can use it in the future. It can fit onto that cable guide. It can also fit into the side panel. I actually had a collection of spare grommets, and so I used those. They're not necessary, but they do finish the whole thing out nicely and give it a good finished kind of a look. Before you're done here, it would be a really good idea to finish up the ends of the cable with electrical tape, or better yet, with heat shrink tape. After you've got those wires fed through the sleeve, you can actually plug them back into the board. If you took the bottom off, you can screw that back in place as well. Believe it or not, you're getting close to finished. Uh, if you're going to use a grommet for the side panel, you want to pass the cables through the grommet and then plug them in. Believe me, I forgot to do that and had to unplug them again. <laughs> Very funny, huh? The grommet does slide into place onto that side panel pretty easily, so that's not a problem at all. You'll screw the side plate on and you want to check to make sure that you've got a nice amount of slack. You don't want those tugging and pulling against the solders that are underneath the heated bed. Uh, at this point, after you've screwed everything together, you're actually good to go. Assuming you didn't run into any major problems, this whole process could be done in an hour or less. And that's about it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, please. If I mess something up, please let me know. Open that up in the discussions and help other people in the future. If you are trying this yourself, be sure to watch the entire video all the way through. Read the instructions that I'm posting. If there are any comments on the video, you'll probably want to take a look at those as well. But at any rate, have a great day and happy printing.